In this short video, we would like to explain the integrity constraints. So, what is an integrity constraint? An integrity constraint is a property that must be satisfied by all meaningful database instances. So, what is a meaningful database instance? Well, a meaningful database instance is a database instance where all the tables uh, they contain the correct information. So, uh, what we are defining is actually part of guaranteeing that that information is correct. So, what is a constraint? Well, a constraint is a condition that should be satisfied by data. That means if we plug in a certain data in this condition, the condition may be true or may be false. Hence, a constraint can be seen as a predicate. The set of predicates uh, that are satisfied by uh, the whole data in the database constitutes the set of all integrity constraints. A database is considered to be in legal state if it satisfies its all integrity constraints. We do distinguish two categories of integrity constraints. Intrarelational constraints and interrelational constraints. For instance, uh, if we consider a relation where uh, one uh, attribute of the relation is an integer and the other attribute of the relation is the square of that relation, well, a tuple constraint would be that the second attribute must be the mathematical square of the first attribute. And interrelational constraints or referential constraints are relations that must be satisfied between different tables. For example, if we consider the university database, an interrelational constraint between a table that does contain the course list and the table that does contain student enrollment in the course must satisfy the condition that the course codes uh, where students are enrolled must exist in the table that contains all the course codes and descriptions. The rationale for integrity constraints is uh, that uh, they are useful to describe the application in greater detail. Basically, they are part of the functionality of the application. For instance, if we do uh, include an integrity constraint by stating that the course where the student must be enrolled must previously exist in the list of courses, that guarantees, uh, that describes how the application works. So, like when somebody is trying to enroll the student in a course, the course code must exist. No one can enroll a student into a fictitious course. Also, these kind of constraints, they do contribute to data quality. So, like once we parse the student's table, we are guaranteed that the course where a student is enrolled does really exist. It's not a fictitious course. It does not represent a data entry mistake in general. Additionally, the integrity constraints, they are also part of the design process and we will see this when we discuss the normal forms at a later time. Please do note that it is not the case that all desirable properties of the data in the database can be described by means of integrity constraints. For example, we cannot really say data in the relation instructor must be correct. For instance, there is no way to guarantee that the names of the instructors in the instructors table have been recorded correctly. Now, let's uh, go and define uh, the tuple and domain constraints. The tuple constraint expresses conditions of the values of each tuple independently of other tuples. For example, GPA greater than 3 or the net value equals the amount minus deduction. That assumes that we have an attribute in a tuple called GPA or we have three attributes in the tuple. One is called amount, the other one is called deduction, and the other one is called net. A domain constraint is a tuple constraint 
that involves a single attribute. For example, GPA less or equal than 4 and GPA greater or equal than 0. Now let's uh, give an example of unique values for tuples. So let's look at the relation that we do see on the slide. The relation that do see, we do see on the slide has a schema composed of registration number, which is an integer, last name or surname, which is a string, first name, which is also a string, birth date of the student, which is a date, and the program where the student is enrolled into. Now, the registration number identifies the students. That means there cannot exist two tuples in the database with the same registration number. But here we might want to observe that personal data could be used to identify the students as well. For example, we might want to like enforce uh, the rule that the three elements of the tuple, surname, first name and birthday, must be unique. 